It's Platt back with another Value Spirit Series video. Uh, today the particular spirit is Smirnoff Vodka. I think Smirnoff Vodka, when I started this series, was one of the first uh, spirits I thought about. I think it exemplifies the concept of a value spirit. Not just that it's cheap, but that's a good value, that it's a good spirit at the right price. Uh, Smirnoff is a vodka brand under the Diageo portfolio. Diageo is one of those major uh, alcoholic beverage conglomerates similar to uh, Beam, Suntory, uh, what have you, uh, the old brown form and stuff like that. Um, it's distributed to over 130 countries worldwide, so you can find it pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's actually produced in several different countries, I want to say eight or nine, uh, UK, Brazil, uh, even Mongolia. And of course here in the U.S. where the modern version of the company was first started. Uh, Smirnoff spent about a decade as the world's most popular or highest selling spirit, uh, pretty much from 06 to 2015. Again, that kind of makes sense because vodka is pretty neutral, pretty worldwide. Uh, spirits uh, pretty versatile too in the craft cocktail world. Uh, it was finally passed in 2016 by Officer's Choice. Officer's Choice, not real popular here in the U.S., but is a uh, whiskey produced in India. And that makes sense considering the world's population hubs in Asia and between India and China, they both love the brown spirits more than the, uh, the white spirits. So that kind of makes sense too, but Smirnoff had an incredible run, run and I think it's still number two as far as sales worldwide. Um, a little bit on the background of the company, the current iteration of the company, like I said, was a U.S. company, but the, the predecessors date all the way back to 1864 in Moscow when a gentleman named P.A. Smirnoff, Smirnoff spelt with a V, not two Fs. When I gather that is a French spelling of the name, or that, that was... Um, why the name was eventually changed. Uh, anyway, P.A. started the company in 1864, but P.A. was kind of a pioneer in the business, uh, not just for starting uh, the earlier version of this brand, but he also in the 1870s became a pioneer in the charcoal filtration process, which again is huge for vodka, because that's one of the quality markers for vodka is uh, cleanliness and, pure, and purity. So the charcoal filtration was huge. Also, P.A. was... Uh, Pretty savvy marketer, was one of the first to utilize newspaper ads, and also major charitable contributions. Um, from what I gather, and I was kind of surprised to read this, I guess in uh, the 1870s or so in Russia, there was an anti-vodka movement led by the uh, Orthodox Church there. PA utilized the press, but he also utilized major uh, charitable contributions to certain people that might have simmered down or whatever. But I was fascinated to think that even Russia went through that kind of... I, I thought... The U.S. was the only one that kind of fell for that prohibition silliness, but I, I guess everybody else did too at some point in time. Um, unfortunately for P.A. and the Smirnoff uh, family, in 1904, the Tsar nationalized vodka production and took the distillery from the family. The family hung around for a little bit, but eventually left Russia after the October Revolution and the fall of the Tsar. Uh, P.A.'s son, Vladimir, though, did try to revive the brand, first in Istanbul, Turkey, then Ukraine, and finally in Paris, where I believe the spelling of the name then switched to the double F from the V. It was a few years later that the current version of the company came about. Uh, Vladimir ended up selling the North American rights to a gentleman named Rudolf Kunit. Now, Rudolf Kunit actually had... Prior relations to the Smirnoff family, from I gather, Kunitz family had sold the Smirnoff's grain back in the Moscow days. So there was a connection there, and Vladimir felt comfortable with Rudolf taking the name and taking the brand to North America. And the rest, they say, is history. Uh, Kunitz eventually got bought out and it rolled over a couple times till eventually ended up in Diageo's hands. Now, like I said, I, th I think Smirnoff is a perfect example of a value brand. And one of, the, one of the perfect ways to point this out is, in these videos, I always point out different articles of Warbur that talk about, you know, how great this spirit is or what a value spirit. And so one of the first articles I found was on something called the Spruce Eats. It's a website. And they claim that Smirnoff is the best cheap vodka for Moscow mules. Well, if you think about it, that's kind of how most people consume vodka these days and things like Moscow mules 
or a vodka tonic or some kind of apple teeny kind of cocktail. Not just straight vodka. There's very few people drinking just straight vodka martinis and even less drinking vodka martinis a little bit of vermouth, but there's not a lot of that anymore. It's generally in some kind of mixer. Well, if you're going to make a Moscow Mule, the ginger beer, which has a strong taste, and then fresh lime, which you want to use fresh lime because that flavor really pops too, why are you overspending for vodka to put in there? You just want a good, clean vodka, and that's uh, Smirnoff. Uh, a couple other accolades. Vine Pear ranks this as one of their best cheap vodkas under $20. Spy.com lists this as one of their top 10 cheap vodkas. And finally, probably the story, or uh, probably the uh, outlet that kind of broke Smirnoff as far as the whole value series thing, or value spirits thing, is ABC News did an expose back in 2009. If you remember 2009, I know out here in Vegas, the whole nightclub thing was booming, the bottle service thing was just getting off the ground. States were kind of changing their legalization on that. And the ultimate premium vodka is really popping up. Grey Goose, Kettle Lunch, Belvedere's. And I know out here people are paying four or five hundred bucks for a bottle of goose that I could have bought at the liquor store for thirty dollars, but the club, you know, overspent. Well, ABC did an expose and did did kind of a blind taste test with those ultra premium vodkas, and Smirnoff was kind of their control, just regular vodka. And Smirnoff hung well with all the big boys. I think Grey Goose actually came in last as far as uh, you know, how it got ranked by by the people, but people really couldn't tell the difference. And again, especially the club thing, what everybody was doing then, again, no one was making vodka martinis with a splash of vermouth, you know, and the bottle service thing. They bring you the bottle, they bring you a bucket of ice and all these mixers, and a lot of times it was Red Bull. Well, if you're going to put vodka in that rot gut stuff, you know, again, why overpay? You just want something clean, and that's Smirnoff. Uh, real quick, the bottle tells a story on Smirnoff. Uh, the front of the label tells us it's 10 times filtered. Again, that's what, what you're wanting, it's just a good, clean spirit. Uh, if you saw ever saw my vodka video in the vodka series, I talked about how, by law, it's supposed to be odorless, colorless, and tasteless, and that the quality, the thing that really denotes quality is how clean it is, thus less flavor. So why are you paying, you know, paying too much for supposed flavor? Also, too, I do have to note something, and this is something I did not know about Smirnoff. I don't know if it's something that's just changed or whatever, but I did notice on the back of the bottle when reading the label, it said made with premium grains. Everybody, everybody's going to kind of say that. But I noted that it was gluten-free. So I, I could throw out several grains in and basically found out it's made with corn, similar to Tito's. Now, where the, the difference may be between the two is Tito's is only produced here in the States. And generally the corn we get in the States called, I think it's food grade corn or whatever. It's a specific uh, breed of corn. The major ag companies here have bred that where um, Smirnoff being distilled in places like Mongolia, UK, Brazil, they have access to corn and, and commercial grain corn, but maybe not the exact same strain of corn so it could be a little just a slight difference um but corn gluten-free highly filtered again similar to tito's and tito's again another brand that i again for the dollar you know if you're going to have moscow mules or vodka red bulls don't pay 30 40 plus bucks for goose and belvedere and crystal skull and all, all those high-end vodkas Smirnoff or Tito's. Way to go. So, enough of that. Let's try a little Smirnoff. Those of you may be wondering, I, I want to say I spent like $8.99 or something for this little pint. I got enough. You can tell in the back, I got enough vodka, so I didn't need a ton more vodka. Uh, but I think it's only like $8.99 for that. And I think the $7.50 might have came in $11.99. So again, very reasonable, uh, well under $20 uh, for it. So, all right, it does have a little sweetness on the nose. Let's give it a try. That definitely does have that corn sweetness. I don't, it might have it even more than Tito's, which kind of surprised me. That's not bad, smooth vodka. 
go down easy. Um, yeah, I'm really kind of surprised by the sweetness I'm really getting off that. I, it's been a hundred years since I had just a shot of Smirnoff. I'm sure I've had a Smirnoff vodka tonic or, you know, some kind of wacky drink with Smirnoff, but I don't think I've had a shot of Smirnoff in a while and surprisingly sweet, but it's still clean. Nice, easy finish, not harsh. Um, again, if I want to throw this in a Red Bull or a vodka tonic, it works as well as any. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or value spirits that you'd like to suggest, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.